Hey, Father Ian Van Heusen here. I'm back with Rob Agnelli. We're going through the virtues of the Blessed Virgin Mary as expounded upon by St. Louis de Montfort. Uh, just as a reminder, because sometimes I feel like a lot of people know who you are, but just briefly, just in case. Yeah, is watching. my name is Rob Agnelli. I'm a cradle Catholic. Um, I, you know, I, we've been doing these things for a while together. Gotcha. Um, yeah, exactly. So, you got you got a few degrees in theology. Yep, yep. Work with NC State students. Have written some articles. By for sure. For yeah, sure. So. So you know what you're talking about, and, and I'm Father Ian Van I know what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, so, uh, okay, so jumping in a little bit. So one of the things, we've both worked with young people, and, we, and I've done a lot of teaching. I was a teacher before entering. You know, the fascinating thing about, like, ideas is you can, you can learn an idea, but there's that moment when it kind of, like, it's like an aha moment. We talk about that a lot in teaching, mm -hmm. that aha moment when you're, like, it finally all makes sense. So then the classic way this is put is the idea goes from the, the head to the heart, right? Yeah. Now, have you ever had a moment like that? Yeah, I mean, in, in teaching, like working with younger people, uh, teaching the faith, uh, very often what happens is I will say something to them and it will come out of my mouth in a certain way mm -hmm. that almost is te teaching, I don't know if you ever had that experience where you're almost teaching yourself where everything just sort of fits together yeah. You know, it, it's almost, I mean, it probably is a gift, the gift of teaching, right? Where, yeah. um, but where you can, you suddenly, when you really begin to, when a, an idea takes root in your heart, you begin, to, you can explain it really easily, right? Like, yeah. this is how you get the idea, like, this is why we know God knows one thing himself, right? Mm -hmm. the, the better you know something, the more simple it gets, yeah. right? Because you can summarize it in one thing. Exactly. Um, and, and then explain it in one thing. So, the, you know, this... I mean, even physicists do it, right? They want the theory of everything. This is one theory which everything fits together. Exactly. Um, and, and, of course, that's not going to happen because it's, it's divine. But the point is, is that like, it, you can understand big things with these sort of succinct ideas, right? Well, and properly speaking, in what, so there's what's called epistemology. The ideas become almost a part of who we are. So there's a kind of illumination that actually the ideas change who we are, right? Yeah, well, ideas have consequences, really. Yeah. Like, but you, you can have theories, which really don't touch you, right? But ideas are yours, yeah. and, it, it, and it's your understanding of reality. And then how is, how is that actually, how are you going to now conform to, to reality as it really is? Yeah, right? exactly. And the idea, you, when you perceive the reality, when the, the reality illuminates you from within, you conform to it. And this is a long way of getting around this idea of faith. But I, I got my own story before we get into this idea of faith with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Is I was once sitting in a chapel. I was telling him before, this is one of my favorite stories to tell about prayer. I was sitting there and it was, it was not St. Martin de Porres Chapel. It was the upper side, Immaculate Conception. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there and I can remember this. I was like in the back pew. I was like, I have this idea. This idea is so profound. I was like, this is so simple and so profound. And I was just thinking about it for a half hour. And then I came to the whole, end of the holy hour. I had my journal with me. I was like, I got to write this idea down. So I was like, all I have to do is love other people like God has loved me. And I was like, love one another as I have loved you. If only someone would have told you that before. <laughs> exactly. You know, everything would have been so much easier. It took you forever to come to the conclusion on your own, right? Exactly. But, but, but really what I experienced in that moment was I'd heard that hundreds of times. But like for the first time, it, it had kind of, it was an enlightenment. Like my intellect was filled with light. And I saw it as it was. I saw the beauty of it and it resonated with me. And we, this was kind of a long way of getting around this idea of lively faith. So with faith, we can talk about a few different things, right? There's the element of trust. When we say we have faith in something, we trust. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary trust, her fiat, let it be done unto me according to thy word. But I also like this idea of the illumination of the intellect, which St. John of the Cross gets at, right? Mm -hmm. So faith illuminates the intellect and conforms the intellect to God. So in that sense, the Blessed Virgin Mary, her faith was when, I love this image of like rain soaking into soil. Like when she heard the scripture, because she had, didn't have the stain of original sin, all the scripture just soaked into her, right? Soaked into her, her being. Yeah, you know? and I think, I think those two ideas of, of, you know, trust and then sort of the knowledge, right? Those things fit together because really the trust is not, uh, we use faith when we really probably mean hope sometimes, right? But the, yeah. the trust is in the source who, who's giving it to you, right? Like who's giving you the news, who's giving you, you know, mm -hmm. that, that it's always the foundation of, of a lively faith is that she knew who the source was. And mm -hmm. so 
she knew that it was truth and she knew reality was that way. Um, and, and in a certain respect, right, so faith gives us, uh, I, I was like the, the definition of a share in God's knowledge, right? Yeah. Like he's revealing how he thinks, yeah. right? And, and, and in that, of course, he's revealing himself, but he's also revealing to us how he thinks and yeah. what level he thinks at it and what, what is important to him. And she got that, right? So, yeah. and, and, and of course, in order to do that, you got to hold all of these things in your heart. It takes a long time of sitting there with God to get, mm-hmm. even begin to, like it's your experience, 30 minutes, to get your mind wrapped around what is a simple Christian, like not to make fun of you, like, yeah, but a simple just, Christian principle, right? Like yeah. it took you all that time to sort of get your mind around that so that now it becomes foundational to who you are yeah. and how you're going to live. Well, this is where I, I was talking recently with... Um, with some college students about the idea of, I've been thinking about it a lot, because obviously we've heard a lot of the, in the, our culture about this idea of enlightenment and enlightenment. It normally gets associated with East Asian religions. And when I, when I studied some of those East Asian religions, in the idea in like, for example, in Buddhism, is that by meditating over and over again on a doctrine, it becomes a part of who you are. Now, of course, their doctrines are different than ours because they believe in the emptiness of the universe and and other Mm -hmm. principles. But we have a similar thing that I think we miss out on with catechesis and with that there's the the enlightenment of the intellect and the healing of the will. And normally when people tend to think of growth and holiness, they think more of the healing of the will, which is more like letting go of anxiety, letting go of negative emotions and, and, and those kinds of things. But that pondering over and over again of truths, and this is what we see with the rosary, and we see with studying and, and meditating on the truths of the faith, they change who you are. It's not just information. These ideas, ideas have consequences. I think, I think we're both referencing the same book. I, yeah. I'm just A friend <laughs> recommended to me, I'm reading parts of it. These ideas, they, they change who we are in our, our morality, they change our emotions, they transform us the more we conform to these. Because I was explaining this to the college students, I was like, because I was explaining to them a little bit of Aquinas on predestination, I was like, look, right now you may not fully understand it, you may never fully understand it, but oh, at a certain point you might, because of years of meditating on these things, that some of these things can be explained in three minutes or, or less, but they don't really sink in until that moment, you know. Yeah, well, so I don't, we, you know, in a culture where we want everything very quickly, right, we, we know how to look at things, but we don't know how to see them, right? Yeah. So, and this is the, the growth of prayer, right? Moving from look to see, like to see yeah. something, you've got you've to absorb it, right? To look, which is like meditation early on, right? Like that's me actively sort of examining something. What I need to get is in this position of where I'm receiving it. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, use the example of Our Lady whenever they're, you know, the Annunciation, right? She's there kneeling with the scriptures in front of her. Yeah. Receiving, right? And, and, and she's the, the ultimate model of that. I mean, that's the model of femininity anyway, of, of receptiveness, right? So she, it's not just, she's just going over these ideas and ideas and it's, she's, she's getting, she's being fed, you know, directly by God because she's holy. And, and so she's beginning to, to now see reality and not just look at it, which is, yeah. that's what a lively faith is, right? Yeah, I love that image because there's one example at St. Charles and Pope Benedict writes about it. I think he says either, he, I might have said this or he said it. But it's I can go- see how you can confuse the two. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all go, the time. Going back I, to- I confuse the two all the time. Like, was that Father Ian or Pope Benedict? <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways. Wow, going back to the Tony Stars. <laughs> <laughs> it was either me or Pope Benedict. <laughs> but before Mary received the word, she pondered the word. Yes. Before, before receiving the word incarnate, she pondered the word in the, the scriptures. Yeah, we can't skip. We can't skip that step, right? Yeah. Like, and that's, I think, is your point, right? Yeah. Like, you have to, you, before to grow in prayer, you got to learn how to meditate before you can contemplate. Yeah. Before you receive the gift of contemplation, exactly, right? and, and and she made herself ready to receive, like, like she physically received the word of God, right? Yeah. Because she was so ready, exactly. Which is a great thing to ponder, and and, and that, that's a, I mean, and that I think that we could even look at that, and I've meditated this on the joyful mysteries, is that process of that's how inspiration arises, that's how growth happens. We prepare to receive the word. We receive the word and we give birth to something new. 
And, and so the, the, the Blessed Virgin Mary giving birth to our Lord Jesus Christ becomes the pattern of our own transformation. Uh, receiving that word of God, pondering it, um, letting it grow within you, um, for her quite literally, but for us metaphorically, uh, symbolically, and then giving birth to something new. Yeah, and, and that's why St. Louis de Montfort, again, we talked in the earlier one about him not giving you a whole lot to go on with these virtues, yeah. just names them, but why the adjective is really important, lively. Yeah. Right? It, it's, it gives you this idea of it just being alive, right? Yeah. And, and what, what are things that are alive? They, they bear fruit all the time, right? Especially as they mature. And the fruit is sweet, yeah. right? And, and that, that lively faith is really, like, that's a key aspect of it. It's not just faith. It's not just I believe. But almost to the point, like, I'm willing to suffer whatever, whatever comes from this. Like, I'm willing to suffer for this truth because this is how reality is, and I know the one who has revealed it to me. Well, that, uh, what, there, was some, there was something somebody was talking about. I think it's, of all places, not that I recommend TikTok, but it was a TikTok video. And they said something about, like, beliefs. It's like, you, 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 even if somebody could force you to pretend like you don't believe something, deep down you still believe it. Because it's like a belief is you see something and your whole world is shaped around it. And of course, sometimes your beliefs can be wrong, but when your beliefs are right, you, you, you have to be willing to die. And this is the classic idea that you can't go against your conscience, right? Once you see something, yeah. you have to- You can't unsee it. You can't unsee it, right? Yeah. Well, let's, let's jump into a little bit of integration. So how do we integrate this into our prayer life, into our, our daily life? Um, I think the, the big thing is for families and for educating the young, I don't think parents sometimes realize just simply bringing up these ideas and talking about them, that kind of repetition, um, the repetition of the rosary, how, how formative it is, even if it's not like a, a light in the sky kind of thing, the, the repetition, the formation. Yeah, and, and that just having the faith around in a, in a family yeah. is really, um, I, I make fun of, I won't tell you which son it is, but one of my sons is famous for his, wait, dad. And I hear, when I hear that, I mean, okay, he, he's been thinking about something and he wants to talk about it now. And yeah. it's almost something profound that, that he has run, run around a little bit in his head off of something that seemed relatively simple when it was said at the time. Um, and, and he's come to this, this mm. sort of conclusion of, Oh, there, there's a consequence to, you know, believing, you know, that Jesus is really in the, the Eucharist. Or, you know, there's a consequence to believing that, you know, Mary is the, really the mother of all of us. And, and it, it was beautiful. Whenever I, whenever I hear the wait, Dad, I'm, I'm so ready for him to, because he's, he's about to unload something that he's been chewing on. And yeah. maybe not even deliberately, just, it just keeps gnawing at him, right? And that's, well, and how important that is, that, how important that step is in your family life and in your, that... You will tell your kids, Jesus is present in the Eucharist to make acts of faith. And then there'll be that moment when it'll awaken in them and they'll have that aha moment. And, and, and also, I think one of the, the big challenges I think for parents is being available for those moments. Like, and not to, because not to, I have to, I mean, sometimes, I mean, the best, the funniest thing I have to do is I have to hold my tongue sometimes as a, a, a as a chaplain with the college students says, they come to me, they're like, you know, Father, I was thinking about this. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, yeah, I talked about that like three weeks ago, yeah. right? Yeah, well, because you probably <laughs> had planted the seed at some point, right? And it just, it, it has to percolate, right? Like, yeah. it's, uh, I mean, you've probably had the experience of, you know, you, I get this when I'm teaching, someone will say, you said this, and I'll have no recollection of actually saying it. And I mean, maybe I did say it. Um, yeah. but, but it had hit something, something I said, it was probably a side thing and they ran with it. Right. And that's a lively faith. The yeah. running with the truths of the faith, running with it and, and seeing how it all fits together. Right. The, the yeah. idea of this, I mean, the creed, right. What we believe, the content of what we believe is like the word they use is symbol on, right. Which is the Greek word for like putting together, like yeah. it all fits together. Right. And yeah. so you, you could literally contemplate it forever, which is beautiful, right? Yeah, a exactly. beautiful gift. And that's a lively faith, right? Like, exactly. you know, this is not some abstract principle. This, okay, this is re the base of reality. Okay. How's it touching me? Like, and how's mm. it going to touch me? Exactly. And allowing for that to happen with your kids and with your families. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it just, it, it really is like a lot of it is, you know, growing up my kids, I would, I would do catechism lessons with them. Mm -hmm. Um, but my, my style was always just throw questions at me. Like I might throw a question at them to start, but I just want to know where your minds are running. 
and, and we're gonna, I'm gonna jump in and step with you and we're just gonna talk about whatever it is. You know, we would awesome. start here and we'd end up wherever. That's awesome. Um, you know, if you give a kid, especially the opportunity to wonder, right? Wonder is really, that's the idea of like, again, mm -hmm. seeing instead of just looking, right? Um, and then you're there to answer their questions. There's, there's a beauty that happens as, as their faith becomes lively. That's awesome. Heck yeah, I think it's a good place to end. So yeah, thanks for it. joining us. Yes, that was Lively Faith. We're going to be continuing. So we're down with, we've done two virtues. We got yep. eight, more to, eight more to eight go. Eight more to go. Let's, let's get let's, hydrated. All right. <laughs> all right, thanks guys.